If you like Lore and Legends, or my other podcast, Skinwalker Radio, then check out another podcast from across the pond called Stories of Strangeness, where husband and wife team, Zoe and Mike, look into topics of the paranormal, folklore, cryptids, hauntings, UAPs, aliens, conspiracies, and all manner of strangeness. They've even covered topics that I've covered here, like Skinwalker Ranch, remote viewing, and Nikola Tesla, in even greater detail. So be sure to check out Stories of Strangeness wherever you get your podcasts. The following story comes from the Yoruba people of West Africa, who today live throughout the countries of Nigeria, Benin, Togo, and Ghana. There was once a poor man who was very kind to animals, birds, and insects. However little he had, he always spared a few grains of corn or beans for his parrot, as well as spreading some bits on the ground every morning for the industrious ants, hoping that they would be satisfied and leave his few possessions untouched. And for this, the ants were grateful. In the same village, there lived a greedy man who had by crafty and dishonest means collected a large sum of gold, which he kept securely tied up in the corner of a small hut. He sat outside this hut all day and all night so that nobody could steal his treasure. When he saw any bird, he threw a stone at it, and he crushed any ant which he found walking on the ground, for he detested every living creature and loved nothing but his gold. As might be expected, the ants had no love for this man, and when he had killed a great many of their number, they began to think how they might punish him for his cruelty. What a pity, said the king of the ants, that our friend is so poor while our enemy is so rich. So the ants got an idea. They decided to move the greedy man's treasure to the poor man's house. To do this, they dug a great tunnel under the ground. One end of the tunnel was in the poor man's house, and the other end was in the hut of the greedy man. On the night the tunnel was completed, a great swarm of ants began carrying treasure through the tunnel and into the poor man's house. And when morning came and the poor man saw the gold lying in heaps on the floor, he was overjoyed, thinking the gods had sent him a reward for his years of humble toil. He put all the gold in a corner and covered it up with cloths. Meanwhile, the greedy man discovered that much of his treasure had gone missing. He was alarmed and could not think of how the gold had disappeared. He had kept watch all the time outside of his hut. Then, the next night, the ants again carried a great portion of the gold down the tunnel. And again, the poor man rejoiced, and the greedy man grew more furious. On the third night, the ants worked non-stop, and succeeded in moving all of the treasure to the poor man's hut. The gods have sent me so much gold, shouted the poor man as he put away his new treasure. But the greedy man called together his neighbors and told them that in three consecutive nights his hard-won treasure had vanished away. He swore that nobody had entered the hut by himself, and therefore the gold could have only been removed by witchcraft. However, when the hut was searched, a hole was found in the ground, and they saw that this hole was actually the opening of a tunnel. It seemed obvious that the treasure must have been carried down the tunnel, and so everyone began hunting for the other end of the tunnel. Eventually, it was discovered in the poor man's hut, and under his pile of cloths, they found the missing gold. The poor man protested in vain. He could not possibly have crept down such a small tunnel. He pleaded his case that he truly did not know how the gold had gotten into his hut, but the rest of the people said that he must have some magical spell he used to make himself very small and that he crept down the tunnel at night into the greedy man's hut. For this, they locked him up in a hut. On the next day, he was to be burnt alive. When the ants saw what had come of their plan to help him, they were perplexed and wondered how they could save their friend from such a painful death. There seemed to be nothing for them to do but try and eat the entire hut where he was confined. It took many hours, but eventually they devoured the whole hut, and the poor man was astonished to find himself standing in an open space. He then ran away into the forest and never came back. 
The next morning, the people saw that the ants had been at work. Only a few stumps of the prison hut remained. They said, The gods have taken the punishment out of our hands. The ants have devoured both the hut and the prisoner. And only the ants knew that this wasn't true. For a short story with a simple plot, I think this African folktale packs a lot of lessons. So I'll start from the top. The poor man is generally good to the world around him, while the greedy Scrooge man is not. This kindness of the poor man earns him the favor of the ants, even though they have no direct contact. The ants take it upon themselves to do something about the poor man's condition, at the expense of the greedy man. For a while, it seems to work, but they go too far, and without realizing it, the greedy man begins to suspect foul play. And even his neighbors, who were not necessarily his friends to begin with, realize that something's not right. Eventually, they found the small tunnel and began looking for the other end. Where did all the gold go? This eventually led them to the poor man's home, where they discovered the gold. The poor man had no idea how the gold got into his house. For all he knew, it was magic. And likewise, the greedy man suspected it might be magic that took all the gold in the first place. So as punishment, the village decides that the poor man should be executed for theft and likely witchcraft. The ants, who only had good intentions to start with, realized this was all their fault. The man they wanted to help ended up being on death row because of them. The ants then come in the night and devour the prison hut where the man is held. Never realizing the ants, the poor man gets up to find himself in an empty field. He runs away into the forest, never to be seen again. Does that story remind you of anything? Are there any social, economic, or moral scenarios that come to mind? My mind came to a few more familiar phrases. Give a man a fish, feed him for a day. Teach a man to fish, feed him for a lifetime. Or how about robbing Peter to pay Paul. Or maybe parents who unintentionally wreck their children's lives by giving them anything and everything. Despite the good intentions of the ants, the real result of their actions was that they created animosity in the village above and beyond what existed previously. The poor man ultimately lost his home and nearly his life, and nothing changed in the greedy man except that he became more bitter. Theft, cough, cough, taxes, is absolutely not the same thing as charity. Or how about we view this a little weirder? Treat the ants like an unknown third party. God, perhaps. Or maybe aliens, or even zookeepers. Doing one gesture with a specific intent, but getting something completely unintended as a result. I think it'd be fair to say we've all done that at some point. Think big picture, think long term and think about the risks. And also visit lorenlegends.net for show notes and some extra content. And support the show by visiting buymeacoffee.com slash lorenlegends. All I had for this episode. See you next time.